Okay, well, it's 6.01, so I think we should probably get started. I wanted to say good evening to everyone and welcome. We're so glad you could join us here tonight as we listen to our speaker, April Lynch, give her talk all about native oaks. I'm Claire lovenberg Gallardo, and I'm a master gardener here in, in Sonoma County. Um, just a couple little things before we get started. Um, this talk is being recorded and it will be available soon after the um, after the presentation on our on our website and on our YouTube channel. Um, you right now you're seeing a screen uh, that shows at the bottom a big blue arrow pointing to the bottom to the Q and A question and answer function. So if you click on that and you you can type in a question during the presentation, um, and we will we will get those answered either uh, uh, anyway. So we will get those answered. Um, we um, we we will also we just also want to encourage you to explore our Master Gardener Sonoma County Master Gardeners website, our Facebook page, and our Instagram account, and learn more learn more about the program and the resources that we have that are available to you. In 2023, our theme uh, will be focusing on trees. So please check our website. We have a link to another wonderful presentation called Climate Forward. Uh, talking about trees and, and things to plant to, to the weather the next 50 years of climate change. If any reason, for any reason, your Zoom connection drops during the presentation, just rejoin and you can, you can get back in. Um, let's see. Um, I think that is about it for right now for me. And I'm going to introduce Janet Barocco, who's going to introduce uh, our speaker, April Lynch. Thanks. Thanks, Claire. Um, good evening, everybody. Um, I'm Jana Barocco. I'm a master gardener since 2009, and um, I feel really lucky to be able to collaborate with my fellow master gardeners, educating and empowering home gardeners in Sonoma County on how to grow food and habitat gardens. I've also enjoyed um, over the years giving presentations on cultivating culinary herbs and edible flowers. Um, tonight, um, Wow, I've had the pleasure of experiencing April's remarkable presentation, and you guys are in for a treat. Um, she does this amazing presentation that you will see on Native Oaks of California. I feel really honored to introduce her to you today. April Lynch is a native Californian, and she joined the U University of California um, Master Gardeners in 2009. Her interests include native oaks, wildflowers, vegetable gardening, and home orchards. April is a photographer and an award-winning artist, and she's co-authored and published a book called Wildflowers, A Guide to Identifying the Wildflowers of Northern Californians, California's Wine Country. And now it is my pleasure to introduce April Lynch. Thank you, Janet, for your kind introduction, and Claire and Cleo for coming tonight and helping us out. Now I'm going to bring up my presentation and share it with you. Here's a copy of our handout. And if you haven't already had a chance to um, get a copy of this handout, here's the QR code. I'll give you a couple of seconds if you need to click that with your cell phone. April, we also have the link in the chat and people can click on it and have fast access to it. Oh, thank you. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and um, my slide now and start our presentation. My grandmother instilled my love for hiking when I was around seven years old. One day when quite possibly I was a little too energetic for grandpa, grandma invited my sister Patsy and me to take a walk. And when I said, ah, no thanks grandma, she slyly added, but I can take you to see the skunk cabbages skunk cabbages. My mind conjured up visions of hybrid green and white hairy cabbages hobbling around the forest, and I was relieved and delighted when we arrived at the creek and found the 
smelly, otherworldly yellow skunk cabbage wildflowers growing there. If you want people to know exactly what plant you're talking about, use the species name instead of the common name. Here you see the species name Quercus slobata below this valley oak picture. Further references to Quercus in this presentation may be seen as a capital Q. Now let's take a walk. Let's go to Bear Valley near Wilbur Hot Springs in Calusa County. You probably have all seen valley oaks. These trees have been known as English oak, Los Encinos, Los Robles, Weeping Oak, and Mush Oak, all names given to them by people with their own associations in mind. Early botanists were struck by the deeply lobed outline of the leaves and former declared the species Puerca slobata, roughly meaning a fine tree with lobed leaves. Here are some wildflowers you commonly see growing in the grasslands with valley oak. They're gold fields, Lasthenia californica, and Royal Larkspur delphinium variegatum. Before we get traveling further, first some business. The Sonoma County Master Gardeners would like you to see their mission statement. Imagine, if you will, the wild places of California to be a huge, untended garden. This is where you'll find the oaks, the epitome of sustainability. As a keystone species, Quercus plays a critical role in its ecosystem. Oaks keep forests healthy by maintaining a rich mix of plants, insects, birds, animals, and organisms wherever they grow. As a source of food and habitat, they're especially important for wildlife. In this natural world, more than 18 oak communities can be found. Among these varying habitats, you'll find hundreds of species of flowering plants. Also, there are at least 330 vertebrate species, which includes over 60 species of mammals, 160 species of birds, and many reptiles and amphibians, which use oak habitats in some fashion during their breeding season. Oaks also provide home for many animals during migration or wintering. Not all of us have space for an oak tree in our garden, but many of us have real properties which can support the expensive area an oak tree needs. Regardless, we can all learn to be good stewards of our precious oaks and protect them for future generations. Here is my overview. The evolutionary lineages of California oaks. All true oaks share the same unique characteristics my photo album with nine native oaks, and where to conduct your own research. Taxonomy creates order in an otherwise chaotic world and helps us to identify and name each species. There are more than 435 species worldwide of Quercus, the oaks, distributed across the temperate and tropical regions of the Northern Hemisphere. The most recent classification system of Quercus, published in 2021, recognized eight sections within two subgenera, subgenus Quercus, with approximately 295 species, and subgenus Cirrus, with 140 species. Subgenus Cirrus is restricted to Europe, Asia, and Northern Africa, and subgenus Quercus, the American clade, is largely restricted to the Americas, except for two dispersals back to Eurasia. 
The oaks in each of these eight sections are defined by their own distinctive set of characteristics. These characteristics are often useful when identifying oaks, but more importantly, they reveal differences in genetic heritage. You will find the native oaks of California in the last three sections here highlighted in red. The oaks in the sections are further named by genus and specific epithet. Together, these two names are referred to as species. The abbreviated author citation sometimes follows the species name. According to the Jepson Herbarium maintained by the University of California, Berkeley, there are 21 species of oak in California, not counting oak varieties and hybrids. You can begin identifying these oak by observing the following unique characteristics that all true oaks share in common. This is a shoot of a coast live oak. Notice the dormant lateral buds that are clustered at the tip and the alternate spiral arrangement of the leaves. Oaks are monaceous, having both male and female flowers on the same tree. In the spring, oaks develop pendulous male flowers called catkins. When these catkins dry, the wind distributes the pollen to female flowers of nearby trees. Reproduction is most successful when pollen from one tree makes its way to a female flower of another tree of the same species. When two different species of the same section produce a viable seed, a hybrid oak can result. These two pictured oaks will not produce a viable seed because they are from different sections. This tiny female flower of an interior live oak growing between the leaf and the stem in the leaf axle. Female acorn producing flowers are scattered singly or in small groups among the youngest growth. Flower formation and acorn production may not occur until the oak is several decades old, but can continue until the end of life. Here are the magnifying flowers of Shreve Oak. In Sonoma County, Shreve Oak may be found in moist woodlands and forests heading toward the coast. Once pollinated, the ovary in the female flower produces an acorn. The outer shell or hull provides a barrier between the exterior environment and the seed within and facilitates dispersal of the seed away from the parent plant. Acorns vary in shape and size depending upon the species and also upon the tree's environment, available water, and soil fertility. Here are the acorns from three sections of California oaks seated within their distinctive papules. Lobate on the left with, thin, with the thin ragged scales, Quercus on the right with thick knobby scales, and Protobalanus in the center with intermediate characteristics. Would you make my telephone, please? The seed within the acorn contains the embryonic beginnings of a mighty oak wrapped in a papery coat. The embryo has a very short root, two cotyledons that store food for the young seedling, and a shoot apex that will produce stems and leaves. The cotyledons make up most of the embryo because they store all of the carbohydrates, proteins, and fats that the seedling will rely upon after germination until it can produce its own food.
If a seedling can survive drought, browsing animals, and hungry insects, it will have lived long enough to be called a sapling. Here's a picture of a sapling that I've raised from an acorn. And this fall, it's going to be planted out by the barn where I can keep an eye on it and give it occasional water to keep it, grow to keep it growing. Fungus can be another problem for older trees. Fungus grows in the soil and in the Mediterranean climate of cool, moist winters and hot, dry summers here in Northern California, it's usually kept in check. When irrigated moisture is added in the summer months under the oaks, various fungus species can thrive and attack the roots and shoots of oak trees and slowly kill them. These fungi are harmless to the oaks, but are poisonous to humans. This valley oak lived approximately 195 years, and in this crosscut, you can clearly see the growth increments. Valley oaks commonly live 250 years and up to 500 years in the best condition. Oak wood is tough and enduring, and every year the tree produces cells which make up growth instruments or growth rings. The light colored cells are developed in the spring when there's plenty of water. They're surrounded by strong, dark fibers that function almost exclusively as mechanical supporting cells. In the summer, only darker colored fibers fill out the cells of the summer wood. This dark band separates the spring wood developed in successive years. In the past, <clears throat> when I saw a tree on the ground, I'd think, ah, firewood. Now I see an intricate and interconnected system of cells, which allow the tree to develop strong wood annually, annually, store and circulate water, sap, and nutrition, both horizontally and vertically, and provide structural support to protect the tree from damage due to wind and snow load. The roots are responsible for water and mineral nutrient uptake, mechanical anchoring of the shoot, and storage of biochemicals. An oak's root system is surprisingly shallow with long, extensive lateral roots spreading out close to the surface rather than a deeply penetrating tap root. Most roots are found in the upper two to three feet of the soil. This declining oak has been undermined by flooding and erosion and is dropping its bark due to the loss of roots directly below. Tree and shrub oaks can re-sprout from their root crowns from buds below the soil and this type of growth is called crown sprouting. Because the root system is already established and there is less competition for sunlight water and nutrients, these oaks will grow, grow faster than those sprouting from an acorn. There are nine oaks in this album. You can follow along your, with your handout, which has been numbered accordingly. We start with the red oaks. Incidentally, these three red oaks are susceptible to sudden oak death. This California black oak, Quercus kelogii, from section Lobate, the red oaks of North America, Central America, and Northern South America. California black oak grow away from the coast in deep, fast-draining soils 
between 100 to 8,000 feet above sea level, on slopes, in valleys, and in evergreen and coniferous woodlands. California black oak can tolerate freezing temperatures and snow load. Here are California gold banner growing beneath the California black oak. These beautiful California black oaks are my favorite due to the seasonal color changes of the leaves. Look for the deeply lobed leaves, which are three to eight inches long with pointed tips. They're deciduous. In the fall, light and temperature signals the tree that it's time to prepare for dormancy. The tree produces a hormone that will cause the leaves to drop so that it can save its nutrients for next spring's flush of new growth, leaves, and flowers. The stalked acorns are one to one and a half inches and are oblong and squat with blunt tips. The cups are covered with thin, ragged, papery scales that may cover up to two thirds of the nut. These acorns mature in 18 months. The bark is smooth and gray when young and matures to a very dark gray, almost black color. A reddish coloration can be seen between the narrow, deep and checkered fissures. The oldest California black oak trees can live over 350 years. These trees can grow to 115 feet at maturity with ascending limbs and an open rounded crown. This enormous black oak dwarfs the apple trees growing next door. The second tree in the album is Coast Live Oak, Coercus agrifolia of section Lobate. Coast Live Oak live in central California, as far north as Mendocino County and south past the Mexican border, away from salt spray and high winds on coastal plains, protective bluffs in forests and woodlands. They do not tolerate frozen ground. You don't think I'd sent you home without seeing a skunk cabbage. Here is the yellow skunk cabbage, Lysichiton americanus, growing along the coast at Van Dame State Park in Mendocino County. These flowers smelling of rotten cabbage attract flies and other insects which will pollinate the plant. You don't want to walk on the, underneath these trees with bare feet. While these leaves are evergreen, the tree sheds some of the older leaves. Notice they're curled under like unlike the flat leaves of interior live oak and canyon live oak. These leaves are never lobed, dark green, thick and leathery, one to three inches long and the margins have spines or bristles. The acorns are narrow and cone shaped and are three quarters to one and three quarters inches. These straw covered cups are covered with thin overlapping scales and they mature in the first year. Notice they're growing at the tips of this year's growth. As the tree ages, the bark will become darker and develop irregular cracks and fissures. 
They're climbing on the smooth gray bark of a young coast live oak is a well camouflaged western fence lizard. Coast live oak grow from 20 to 40 feet tall, but may, live, may reach 80 feet, and they can live up to 250 years in the best of conditions. These magnificent coast live oak are growing at the Helen Putnam Regional Park in Petaluma. And what I like the best about this park is they let you bring your friends. Did you know that California quail, Calipepla californica, live only for two to two and a half years? These chicks will be self-sufficient when they're only one month old. The third tree in the album is interior live oak, Quercus wislizeni of section lobate. And this genus includes shrub forms. Interior live oak can be found up to 2,000 feet in Northern California in chaparral, dry foothills, inland grasslands, and floodplains away from the coast. These bush monkey flowers, Biplicus aurantiacus, are commonly found growing amongst interior live oak. It's host to this checker spot butterfly. Interior live oak leaves are flat and elliptical and one to three inches long. They're evergreen and never lobed. The upper surface is dark green and the lower surface is similar or slightly yellow green and lacking hairs. The, margin may, the margins may be toothed, smooth, spiny, or with short bristles. The acorns of the interior live oak mature in the second year. So look for the bud scale, scar scale, the bud scale scars that divide last year's growth with this year's growth. The acorns are very similar to the coast live oak acorns, which mature in the first year and are found at the tips of the shoots. The bark is very similar to the other trees in this section. Here you can see the red colored wood at a pruning cut. We passed this road sign on Highway 128 in Yorkville on the southern end of Mendocino County, which was an invitation to turn the car around and have a look. These big interior live oak can grow as broad or broader than tall to 72 feet with numerous hor horizontal branches that parallel or intersect the ground. They can live to 200 years. The fourth tree is Canyon Live Oak, Huercas chrysolepis. It is in section Protobalanus, the Canyon Live Oak and its relatives found notably in the coast ranges of California. We have only one species growing in our area. Canyon live oak is also susceptible to sudden oak death. Canyon live oak grow generally from 100 to 9,000 feet and are tolerant of freezing temperatures and snow. This tree is often found near creeks and drainage swales, in canyons, shaded slopes, chaparral, 
mixed evergreen forest and woodlands. These photos were taken from Adobe, Can Adobe Canyon Road on the way to Sugarloaf on the way to Sugarloaf Ridge State Park. The flat evergreen leaves of these canyon live oak are marvelous solar collectors. To more efficiently photosize the sun's rays, the leaves of the top of the tree have thicker layers of cells than the interior ones, which save the, leaf, the tree's resources. The margins can be smooth, spiny, or nearly toothed, and are mostly oval to elliptical. Notice the fine golden hairs on the bottom side of the leaves. Canyon live oak have acorns that are broad based from one to two inches and mature in the second season. The saucer shaped cups are thick and corky and are covered with fine golden hairs when the acorns are green. The bark on a young tree is smooth, rare, whitish. Mature trees have bark that grows checkered and scaly with age. These trees grow 20 to 50 feet tall and have a dense canopy, which can have a golden glow in the springtime. The trunk may reach four feet across at the base and many times develop multiple trunks. Canyon live oak can live to 300 years. You can see these oak on Seagullick Canyon Road between Loch Lomond and Lower Lake in Lake County. These are oaks from Section Quercus, the white oaks of Europe, Asia, North America, and North Africa. These oaks are not susceptible to sudden oak death. Differing from the oak trees, shrubs are intricately branched, short woody perennials, developing lower spreading branches. And depending upon the species, they're generally no more than 10 feet tall. Oak shrubs can grow into stickery, impenetrable masses like these leather oak growing at McLaughlin Nat Nature Reserve on Morgan Valley Road out of Lower Lake. Leather oak grow be below 6,000 feet and are generally found in chaparral and foothill woodlands. They're largely confined to soils derived from serpentine rock. Serpentine soil is high in magnesium and low in calcium, and it takes a specialized plant to live there. Here are seat monkey flowers, formerly uh, erythranth gutata, formerly mimulus gutata, and paintbrushes, castelia affinis. The leaves are evergreen, three quarters to one inch long, and are a dull green on the tops. They are convex and oval shaped. The undersides are pale gray and thickly coated with fine soft hairs. They can have smooth or prickly tooth margins. The acorns are oval one half to one inch, variable in shape, but often thick and cylindrical. The cup is bowl shaped and decorated with warty scales. Leather oak acorns mature in the first year. Leather oak bark is smooth and gray when young, which becomes flaky as it ages. This specific western rattlesnake 
is one of seven species of rattlesnakes found in California. These leather, leather oaks are growing at the Knoxville Res Creation Area between Lower Lake and Lake Berryessa. Here thriving between them is warrior's plume, Pedicularis densiflora. a plant that's partially parasitic on other plants for nutrition. Another beautiful adaptation of the plant kingdom. The blue oak, Quercus douglasii of section Quercus is the next tree. Blue oak are found generally from 500 to 2,000 feet. You will see them in hot, dry foothills, gravelly and rocky slopes, and shallow, well-drained soils. The masses of yellow flowers on the upper right picture are probably golden fields. Blue oak are normally winter deciduous, dropping their leaves in the fall. However, when water becomes scarce, they become drought deciduous and simply drop leaves in the summer while the acorns continue to develop on the tree. The leaves are one to three inches long and have weighty margins, but they can be seen with shallow lobes. Initially, they have a fresh green color in spring, which turn tough and leathery and a bluish green color in fall. A dusty matte-like coating is combined to the top surface and the underside of the leaf is pale green. Blue oak acorns are egg-shaped, three quarters to one and a half inches with sharply pointed tips. The shallow cups are covered with small warty scales. Blue oak acorns mature in the first year. Blue oak bark is light gray or whitish with narrow shallow strips. The bark darkens with age and develops a checkered surface. Blue oak are small to medium sized trees with a maximum height of 60 feet. The trunks are seldom more than two feet in diameter. Here are ethereal spear growing with the blue oak. These blue oak are growing at the top of the ridge at Cache Creek Wilderness area of Lake County in a blue oak woodland. Ha, huh, there goes a California mule deer. <laughs> Looks like it must be a herd coming through. This is the valley oak, Quercus lobata of section Quercus. These valley oak are growing on Highway 12 between Middletown and Cobb in Lake County. Valley oak usually are found below 2,000 feet in Northern California, but most commonly seen at 500 to 800 feet. They prefer deep, rich bottomland soils along stream beds and floodplains, riparian forests, open foothill woodlands, and river valley savannas. Valley oak are a species of concern. The leaves are deciduous, two to four and three quarter inches long and up to two inches across. They have six to 10 blunt deep lobes per leaf and the sinuses extend almost to the mid vein. Their mat grade above 
and dull to pale green below with a felt-like covering of hairs. They're two to three to toothed at the tips. The variably sized acorns are conical, one and a half to two inches long, and warty knobs cover the base of the deep rounded cups. Valley oak acorns mature in the first season. The young bark is thick and gray, but with age, it develops to a thick, blocky, deeply checkered surface. When mature, valley oaks can have a round and spreading canopy of massive limbs that grow to 115 feet tall and 130 feet wide. We pulled the car over at the Laguna de Santa Rosa Woodlands Preserve to watch a fellow fly his kite in this field of buttercups and dormant valley oak. And up it goes. Holland oak can be found growing from 500 to 2000 feet and it tolerates freezing temperatures and hot, dry summers. Where the area of distribution of two different species of the same section of oak overlap, sometimes you'll see a hybrid oak. Once you become familiar with the features of the blue oak and the valley oak, and you see a tree that doesn't look quite right, you might be seeing a hybrid Yalin oak. Sometimes it's hard to tell if a tree is a hybrid because it will have the characteristics of only one parent tree. And other times it will have intermediate characteristics of both parents. This tree is growing at the Peter J. Shields Oak Grove on the UC Davis campus in Davis, California. The Yalin oak tree on the far right is an intermediate shape of the blue oak and the valley oak leaves. Yalin oak usually have the lobe leaves of valley oak, but are bluish in color and occasionally one of the tire, entire leaves of the blue oak occurs. The acorns are the size and shape of valley or blue oak or a combination of the both. Yalin oak bark darkens with age and develops a checkered surface. Here's our last tree, the Oregon white oak, Quercus scariana of section Quercus. This genus also includes a small shrub. These trees are growing on Bloomfield Road near Bloomfield in Sonoma County. They occur below 7,000 feet on rocky thin soils of ridges to deep loams and clays of valley bottoms where rainfall exceeds 30 inches. Oregon white oak tolerates freezing conditions. These American badgers, members of the weasel family, were displaced from the woodlands and grasslands by agriculture and residential development. I videoed this scene with my cell phone from our deck. American badgers are very shy and reclusive.
If you look closely, you can see the little head of their cub poking out of the burrow. These badgers are a species of special concern. These deciduous leaves have rounded or broadly angled lobes, four to six inches long with five to seven lobes per leaf. The shiny green leaves ha have smooth spineless margins. Most everyone's familiar with oak gall or oak apple. There are made, they're made by, oh, they're made by one of over 200 species of oak gall wasps, the cinnipeds, which are associated with native oaks. Here are two other interesting galls which can be found on various white oak species. It's easy to see why people confuse valley oak with Oregon white oak. Remember, the valley oak have six to ten lobes and the Oregon white have five to seven lobes per leaf. The unstalked acorns are large, heavy, and egg-shaped with warty cup that covers less than one-third of the nut. The acorns ripen in the first year. Like other white oaks, the bark is thin and light gray when young, shown on the left, and becomes furrowed and checkered with age. These dormant Oregon white oaks are growing at the Jack London State Historic Park in Glen Ellen. They have upright main limbs and spreading lesser branches. The rounded crown usually grows 26 to 66 feet tall. Their trunks can be two to three feet in diameter and the largest grow up to five feet in diameter. Oregon white oak typically live 100 to 200 years, but trees in fertile valleys can live for 500 years. As you see, it's getting late, so it's time to end the album. Here are the websites I use when I'm researching plants. I start with Calflora, where you can search by common or botanical name. The Jepson Herbarium, which is operated by the University of California, Berkeley, requires a healthy vocabulary of botanical terms. The USDA Plants Database is operated by the United States Department of Agriculture, National Natural Resources Conservation Service. And here you can search for plants throughout the United States. The Plants of the World Online, maintained by the Royal Botanic Gardens Q, is worth a visit to see what's growing around the world. Here are my resources. And if you don't want to see resources, you can look at the butterflies. This is an anise swallowtail and it's, it's caterpillar. And here's the Western tiger swallowtail. When I was a kid, I made a butterfly net and uh, you could see me running around chasing after butterflies. Now I just take their pictures with my camera. Brought to you by the UC Master Gardeners of Sonoma County. 
We're a nonprofit volunteer organization. And if you'd like to support our work in presenting more educational opportunities to, to residential gardeners, here's our website. April, this is Claire, and um, we, we do have one question for you in the Q&A uh, box. Uh, Jill wants to know, why is the valley oak an oak of concern if it does not get sudden oak disease? Well, unfortunately, valley oak, which live in the fertile valleys and open spaces of California, have been removed for uh, farms and um, residen residences and um, commercial use. So um, as we remove them, um, they become less and less common in our landscape in California. Since they're endemic to uh, California, they grow only here in, in the world. Um, once these uh, valley oak trees are gone, they will be extinct. Okay, thank you. If anyone else has a question you'd like answered, you could type it quickly into the uh, Q&A box on the bottom of your screen. And, but in the meantime, just to, in the meantime, I just wanted to say thank you very much to, to April, this was wonderful. and and a real eye opener. Um, it, it's wonderful to have this. Um, we, I also wanted to let you know that we do have a couple several more talks coming up between now and the end of the year. Um, November 5th, we have uh, uh, a talk called What Happened to All the Butterflies in Guerinville by Suzanne Clark. We have a talk November 12th in Healdsburg, um, Super Succulents for Sonoma County by Ann Lowings. And December 3rd in Sonoma, we will have helpful, helpful water saving tips for our drought environment by Dennis Prisvisian. And hope you can join us at one of those there. Um, okay, I think that's all for the, the questions that have been posed. Claire, there's one more question that just dropped. Oh, sorry. That's okay. Uh, do you want me to read it? Yes, I'm please. Planting, I am planting one oh. we grew after the last fire in the Windsor Foothills Park. It's, and I think that was the same person who asked the question about the, uh, the valley oak. Yeah. And uh, so she's planting one in Windsor. OK. Um, and April, one of the questions a lot of people ask us at the desk in various places is about watering um, oak trees if you have them on your property. Is there any advice that you like to give people because people aren't, you know, the, the, there's all concerns. <laughs> well, it's true that we've had less rainfall in the last couple of years and um, people are worried about their oak trees. Well, remember that oaks were um, evolved in this Mediterranean climate of cool, moist winters and hot, dry summers. However, as our drought, um, if our drought continues, um, one might consider adding some water to their trees. If you have an older mature tree, um, you don't want to water close to the, to the uh, trunk of the tree. You want to go out about seven feet from the base of the tree and uh, water in the drip um, in the drip area of where water drips from the leaves to the ground and down to about 15 inches. And what you want to do is imitate the rainfall as we um, ordinarily might have in uh, the winter months if we're not getting enough uh, rain. Okay. Thank you. So, um, I think with that, um, our evening is, is over and we just hope that you will all join us again for, um, for another presentation. Um, thank you so much.
Okay.